Hey boys, it's Arm None. Today I'm gonna to be going over 10 vehicles that I believe you need to own in Grand Theft Auto Online after the Los Santos Mercenaries DLC has been released. All of the vehicles on this list are still available in the game. They are not part of the 180 plus cars that Rockstar removed from the game. These are all available. You can go and buy them right now or do whatever you need to unlock them in the first place. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into it, starting off with number 10. At number 10, we have the Kasatka Submarine. Now I know this is a pretty obvious option, which is why I put it at 10th on the list, because I think everybody knows why you need a Kasatka in GTA. This thing goes for $2.2 million at its cheapest price. However, you can upgrade it all the way up to about $9 million if you fully kit out the Kasatka. Owning the Kasatka does of course give you access to the Keo Perico heist, which is the single best way to earn money in Grand Theft Auto Online per hour, albeit not on a long time scale because there is the big cooldown now. But still, the Kasatka is a good vehicle to own regardless of the Keo Perico heist because it is very, very fun. You can store a Sparrow inside of it, which is a very handy feature to have. The Kasatka is also equipable with cruise missiles, which have a range of about four miles. So you can shoot from your Kasatka and hit players that are on the land very, very far away. Of course, you can also pilot the Kasatka as well as fast travel with it, making it a very versatile vehicle to own in GTA Online, and I think for most players, this is something that you will want to own. Say you need to get from Los Santos to Polito Bay very quickly and then come back very quickly, you can do that fastest by going to your Kasatka, fast traveling to Polito Bay, and then fast traveling back when you're done. And of course, being that it is a submarine, you can take it under the water, and when you go underwater with the Kasatka, it actually removes itself from the radar. Are, so that's pretty cool. Anyway guys, that's it for the Kasatka. I don't want to go on about it too, too much. Let's go ahead and move on to number nine. Now at number nine, we have a vehicle that I think a lot of people overlook in GTA, but it has had some buffs to it recently, which are pretty good. At number nine, we of course have the Schernebog, going for $1.1 million with the trade price up to $1.5 million without the trade price. The Schernebog is a very good anti-aircraft vehicle to have in Grand Theft Auto Online, and with the addition of the new planes, I thought that this was very fitting. The price has also been reduced down to, like I said, 1.1 to 1.5 million, depending on trade price or not, down from nearly $3 million, which is pretty crazy. The Schernebog has the longest lock-on distance of any vehicle in Grand Theft Auto Online with missiles, so that is pretty awesome. And it also rapidly fires five of them after whatever target you are locked onto. And it is free fire as well if you guys decide that you just want to blow something up with it. Unfortunately, it doesn't have any armor, but I do feel like based on the fact that it has such a long lock on range and that the missiles have some of the most aggressive tracking in the entire game, this might be something that you would consider owning in Grand Theft Auto Online right now because of all the planes that are flying around. And a lot of planes have also had their lock on ranges reduced making this thing just that much more viable. At the very least, you could keep a pilot occupied with all the missiles that you can spam shoot after him using the Schernebog. The only unfortunate part of the Schernebog is that you will need to own a facility in order to store it, so that is a bit of a drawback. However, with the price reduction and everything like that, I do feel like the Schernebug is a pretty decent pickup right now in online. With that being said, let's move on to number eight. Next up, we have the Meibatsu Monstrosity coming in at just under $1.5 million. This is a very, very good car to have in online. It's actually the second vehicle ever to have HSW and Imani Tech upgrades for it, which is pretty cool. On top of this, it's very good off-road and has a tiny, tiny turning circle, making it very agile for dodging other players, dodging missiles, and dodging gunfire. It's got some pretty great customization, the performance backs it up, and of course having an HSW upgrade for it is fantastic, and the Imani Tech is just an added bonus on top of it all. Now unfortunately it doesn't have an armor upgrade, but it does have the missile lock on jammer which is the main function of Imani Tech, so it is good that it has that at least. This car was added with the Los Santos Mercenaries DLC, and I think it is one of the best cars from the entire DLC. That being said, on to number seven. Next up at number seven, we have the Avenger. Now the Avenger has had some pretty insane stuff done to it recently. This is gonna run you three and a half million dollars just for the Avenger itself, plus extra money for more upgrades within the facility. And if you want to, there's also a new one and a half million dollar upgrade for the Avenger that gives you access to the new missions that were added with the LS Mercenaries DLC. The Avengers also had some new stuff added to it. You can have a stealth mode on your Avenger for when it's in autopilot or a missile lock-on jammer that you can activate at certain points. It also has mounted machine guns that you can put on it now as well as rocket pods, making the Avenger a lot better armed than it used to be. 
And that's not saying that the Avenger was bad before because it also has three cannons that can be operated by other players within the Avenger. So this thing is very heavily armed. It's got some pretty good armor as well, and it is very, very fast. This is definitely gonna be a vehicle that you guys are gonna to wanna to own in online right now. It is very good, and with the extra buffs that it's got with the Los Santos Mercenaries DLC, it just makes it that much better. You can also store it in your hangar now, so you don't need to own a facility anymore, just for the sake of owning an Avenger. So that's pretty cool. On to number six. At number six, we have a vehicle that's had a price increase from $3.25 million all the way up to $4.5 million, and it is, of course, the Pegasi Weaponized Ignis with the HSW upgrade, which is going to cost you an additional $500,000. Unfortunately, this is only available on the expanded edition of GTA on the Xbox Series S or X and the PlayStation 5. So for PC, last gen, you're not going to be able to get this thing, which is super unfortunate. But regardless, I wanted to include something for the expanded edition of GTA. This is a very good car. It's got really good acceleration, a pretty high top speed, and it comes with a built-in lock-on jammer, which is pretty cool. But of course, the main function of it is the top-mounted minigun on the roof of the weaponized Ignis, which makes it, of course, the weaponized Ignis. This car is fantastic. It's all-wheel drive. It's got some pretty nice customization. Overall, a very, very good car to own in Grand Theft Auto Online. Definitely one that you should look into if you have access to it on the platform that you play on. That's it for the weaponized Ignis HSW. On to number five. At number five, we have a car that is available on all platforms and it's pretty cheap and it is a lot of fun. Of course, it is the Bravado Gauntlet Hellfire. If you don't own one of these, you are missing out and you have been for quite some time. This is one of the most fun vehicles in all of Grand Theft Auto Online. If you just want some brainless sliding fun, this is a great car to own to do that. It's also extremely fast in a straight line with a pretty high top speed and a decent amount of customization to make it a little bit more unique. The Gauntlet Hellfire sounds fantastic, looks fantastic, doesn't handle very well, but it is very, very fun to drive around nonetheless. Overall, the Gauntlet Hellfire is definitely a car that you should own for as little as $745,000, which is a pretty fair price for everything you get with the Hellfire. On to number four. At number four, we have the Brigade 6x6 and the Acid Lab. Now, in order to unlock this, you're going to have to complete the initial six DAX first dose missions that were added with the Los Santos Drug Wars DLC. At the end of those, you're going to get the Brigade 6x6 from a train derailment, bring it to the freak shop, and you will be able to purchase it for $750,000. Now, for an additional 250K, after you've completed 10 DAX Fooligan missions, you will be able to upgrade it with the equipment upgrade, which will allow you to directly make money from this because you can set up the Acid Lab within it. It's also the second most armored vehicle in the entire game, being able to take 48 homing missiles, which is pretty insane. It's extremely fast for its size, and it's very fun to drive around. The armor, of course, helps out too, but overall, it is just a super fun vehicle to have in online, and it's one of the only vehicles in the entire game that can directly make you money just by owning it. So that is a pretty cool feature to have with the Brigade 6x6 or the Acid Lab. With the Los Santos Mercenaries DLC as well, your Acid product will net you an additional 5% bonus on your total sale amount if you just go ahead and name your Acid product, which is pretty awesome. That's it for the Acid Lab and the Brigade 6x6 at number 4, on to number 3. And at number 3 we have the Grotti Itali GTO Stinger TT. Absolute mouthful of a name, but regardless, this is another new car in Grand Theft Auto Online that was added with the Los Santos Mercenaries DLC. It goes for just under $2,400,000, and it is the first car in the history of Grand Theft Auto Online to have HSW and an Imani tech upgrade. Now obviously the HSW is only available on the Expanded Edition, which does suck, However, Imani Tech is available for this car on every platform no matter what. With HSW, it tops out at 162 miles per hour, which is pretty insane. If you don't have HSW, it tops out at about 132. It can take 4 RPGs or 12 homing missiles as long as you have the armor upgrade equipped that you can put on it within the agency. It can also be fitted with a missile lock-on jammer because it is a Mani Tech or a remote control device, as well as oil slick proximity mines, which are pretty great. It's got some nice customization. I don't really love the handling of the car. However, it does handle pretty good if you get used to it, I must say that. Overall, it is a very, very cool car. Not a super big fan of the look, but it does have a bit of customization that you can use to make it look just that little bit better. Overall, the Stinger TT is a pretty good car. You should consider picking it up right now. And at number two, we have the Ocelot Virtue, coming in at $2.2 million, all the way up to $3 million, 
or of course you can get it for free by completing the second half of the Los Santos Drug Wars DLC. You'll get a call and then you will get a free Ocelot Virtue that is directly from Dr. Friedlander. The Ocelot Virtue is the fastest accelerating car on all of the platforms that don't have HSW. Even on the platforms with HSW, it is definitely one of the fastest accelerating cars in the entire game. It also has a Mani Tech, it can be equipped with a missile lock-on jammer, or of course a remote control device as well, which is pretty cool. It's also been buffed by being given the ability to throw sticky bombs out of it, finally. This was supposed to be in from day one, but Rockstar neglected to fix this for several months, but now of course you can throw sticky bombs out of it, which is a very useful upgrade for dealing with Oppressor Mark IIs and whatnot. It's a pretty great looking car, it's got some nice customization as well. Overall, the Ocelot Virtue is definitely one of the best cars that you should own in Grand Theft Auto Online right now, and of course it is within the supercars category. But at number one, we have the new F-160 Raiju plane. This thing is absolutely insane. It's going to run you between $5.1 million and $6.8 million depending on if you've completed the new missions that are launched from within the Avenger. The F-160 Raiju has VTOL, Stealth Mode, dual explosive auto cannons and homing missiles as well as non-homing missiles as well. It's also one of the fastest planes in the entire game as far as acceleration goes and it has a very high top speed. It's also very maneuverable and you can equip it with race handling if you so choose as well to further improve the maneuverability of the plane. This thing is super super fun to fly around in online. It is definitely my number one recommended vehicle that you should own in Grand Theft Auto Online after the Los Santos Mercenaries DLC has come out. That's pretty much it guys. Those are the 10 vehicles that you need to own in Grand Theft Auto Online as of right now. They're all really good. They all serve a purpose. I know there was a lot of Imani Tech cars on this list, but I do feel like Imani Tech is one of the best features that we've got in Grand Theft Auto Online since the release of the contract DLC in December of 2021. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, a like is of course appreciated if not dislike, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new, and I will see you all in the next video. Until then, take care. Peace.